In this recording, what we're going to do, or in this walkthrough, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about your app's data path. So essentially, we're going to talk about where the data comes from that appears on the screen when you run the app, okay? And, and why it's there and why it's in the order it's there and stuff like that. So I'm going to just go, to go ahead and run the app. Um, this is the code, my, my working code uh, for uh, the MP. I've installed the MP1 uh, test suites, but I really haven't done anything uh, else other than that. I'm receiving 10 points on MP1 at present because I haven't made any check style mistakes, but I haven't uh, made any progress. And in this particular uh, walkthrough, we're going to focus on some of how the app is working. And this is not necessarily information that is going to uh, be useful to you immediately, but it is information that will be useful to you eventually. So I'm taking the opportunity on a day where, you know, what we are asking you to do as far as the uh, getting to the next test case is is rather straightforward to spend a few minutes talking about how the app works in a way that I hope is going to help you uh, down the line. Okay, so right now what we're doing is we're firing up the emulator. Now, as I mentioned in the past, one of the things that's kind of interesting and, and, and cool about your app is that there's actually two parts to it. There's both a client and a server. You can think of these two parts as essentially completely different computer programs. That's almost how they behave. It's like I've got two different programs um, that are now talking to each other. Um, and that is exactly how things work when you have typical smartphone applications. So when you're running a smartphone application on your phone, it's talking to other computers, right? in the cloud somewhere is what we say now, right? But essentially you can think about it that on some other computer somewhere else in the world is a server that runs the backend for Instagram or your music app or your mail app or whatever. And your phone is a separate computer, has a separate program running on it. And these two, two programs communicate with each other in order to do things. So for example, if you wanna play a song, your phone would retrieve the sound data from that server and then play it locally. Let's say you want to archive an email or delete an email. You perform the action on your phone. Your phone tells that server what to do and the server is actually the one that sort of completes the action, right? And so it's this client server communication that's responsible for really the experience of modern computing that you have today. And this is true when you run apps on your laptop, when you run apps on your desktop, pretty much any application you run today communicates with something in the cloud. Okay, so I just started out my client and you can see on the screen is this uh, list of the names of some nearby restaurants. And you might be wondering, where is this information coming from? Well, let me show you the ultimate source of this. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm in the uh, project view as I typically am, and I'm going to open up the, oh, nope, sorry, not here. Uh, it's under, I wanna close the test folder. So it's under main resources, and there's a CSV file in here. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. Now, if you wanna install the plugin to help you work with CSVs, that's okay. Uh, what is this, right? So this is a data format that's called comma separated values. Uh, CSV. And what's in here is the data set that is eventually being displayed on your phone. We're going to talk about how it gets from this file to the screen. Um, so this file is CSV. We've talked a little bit about CSV. Uh, you might understand what's in here. There are four fields in here as indicated by the header. There's a unique ID. We'll talk about what we use that for later, but this is essentially an identifier that identifies the restaurant uniquely. You might wonder, like, why not use the name? Well, you'd be surprised. There are like eight different Subway restaurants in the area. I've removed all the duplicates from here, uh, but if we didn't, there are many restaurants that have the same name, either because they're the same franchise or sometimes because they just couldn't agree on what to name the restaurant and two people wanted the same thing, I guess. Um, so we can't use the name as a unique ID. There's also a cuisine value here, which is the third, and you'll see that this takes on different values like Mexican, Chinese, uh, Sometimes it's blank, Korean, pizza delivery. This gives you some sense of what type of food that restaurant serves. And then some of the restaurants also have a URL uh, linked to their website. Okay, cool. So this is information that's used by your server. Okay, now, now how does your server use this information? Well, now let's start looking at the code that we provide. I'm gonna go up, open up server.job. And there's you know a lot of code in here. We'll talk about it in bits and pieces. Uh, but one of the things that the server does when it starts up is it calls this method called load restaurants. And this method 
you'll see here it says get resources stream and then slash restaurants.csv. That's where that file is loaded. And this whole blob of sadness, unfortunately, because this is Java, is required to basically load the entire contents of this into a string. We then use a library to actually read the values of this CSV and we convert it into the serialization format that we talked about called JSON. So what we do is we use this to build a JSON array where each item in the array represents a restaurant and has some fields. And this may be code that you need to come back to because if you look carefully at this, um, this method, you'll see that it's actually not loading all of the different fields that are in this CSV, right? Right now it's only loading the name. And so there's some missing data there that you're gonna have to, uh, this is something that you're gonna have to address later as we go on. In fact, not too, too, not too far later, right? Uh, coming up pretty soon. Okay, so load restaurants. Where is load restaurants called? Load restaurants is called, let's see. Um, so if we wanna find that out, and I should, I should know where this happens, uh, we'll do, let's see, uh, go to declaration or usages, um, and you'll see that there is, uh, it's used in some parts in the test suites, but it's actually called by this private constructor. So when the server starts, the first thing it does is it loads the list of restaurants uh, as JSON, as a JSON string, um, and that's actually what's gonna display it to the client. Now, if we want, we can put, you can put uh, print, print statements in here. So let's print restaurants JSON um, and put that there and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and rerun the app. And then I'm gonna have to open up my logcat tab to see what's happening. Okay, and, and we're gonna see a, a pretty large uh, chunk of data that's gonna be displayed uh, through the logcat output here once the app rebuilds and restarts. Right, because the server this time when it starts up, you'll see it's going to uh, print out this whole list of uh, of restaurants in this JSON form. Right. Okay, and let's see here. Uh, oh, I'm I'm filtering this, so I don't want to filter this. I actually want to look for system data, and here it is. Right. Um, and if you uh, look through, you know, we did some uh, review of JSON in the lesson, so you get a sense of what the format looks like but this is a JSON array. So every item in here is a JSON object. And right now they only have one field, which is name. Okay, so that's how the server gets access to this information. The next thing we wanna understand is how does it get to the client? And so here, there's kind of a forward reference that we're not gonna completely explain yet. The idea is that this server supports what's called the HTTP protocol. It allows the client to request things from it. This is one of the ways in which those two computer programs communicate. Um, so this server uh, serves up this very, very common protocol that's known as the HTTP protocol. And I'm trying to remember if I can actually, uh, we can actually explore this uh, right here locally. Um, you, you, you might be able to actually, you might be able to look up, lo load up your own uh, web browser and actually be able to see that piece of data. Um, let me go over here and, and see if I can get that to work. This would be kind of fun. Uh, all right, so that's that. I need to show the whole desktop. And then I'm gonna open up my, and I'm gonna do 8989. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so, so that must, is that the right port? Let's see here. This must not actually work. Yeah, so, so this is actually running, uh, th this is running inside the emulator that I can't contact. So that's okay. Um, okay, so that, 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 that didn't work, but that's fine. Uh, not everything has to work perfectly. Um, okay, so now I'm back in server.java. So the question is, how does the how does the client request this information, right? So now let's go look at our main activity. And so when the main activity starts up, this is where this request takes place. And what the main activity does is it calls this method called get restaurants. Now. There's a lot here I understand, and we're gonna dive into more details about each one of these steps uh, down the road. So, so don't freak out like we're, I'm expecting you to understand all this in detail. I'm just trying to show you kind of the big picture sense of how does this stuff end up on the display? So I'm gonna look at the, the uh, I'm gonna say go to declaration or usages, and this is in the client. So as we imply, there's a client and a server here. The server is the provider of data in the system. So the server has access to that restaurant CSV. The client doesn't. And so when the app starts up, it actually requests a list of information from the server in a very similar way that like when you fire up your email client, it requests a list of what's in your inbox from the server. 
So it calls this method called get restaurants. And this method composes a request to that backend. And the request is for this path, restaurants slash. So when we build um, web APIs, we have a choice about kind of like what to call things. And in this case, I made the decision that the, this is called a route. So when I request this information from the server, what I should expect to get back is a string containing JSON with information about the restaurants. This is a JSON array. And what you'll see here is that when the call completes, I deserialize that using a process that we're gonna to continue to talk about into a list of restaurants, okay? That list of restaurants is then passed back to the main activity using the callback, something else that we're gonna talk about. So again, very high level overview, don't get scared. We'll come back and talk about all of this stuff together. And the main activity, when it receives this, uses the list adapter, which is a, um, which is a library that we're using to actually render the list, and it calls this replace all method. And that replace all method is what actually is responsible for loading those restaurants into, into the view, right? And so let's uh, kind of prove this to ourselves. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna put in here uh, a log.d uh, tag. I'll import my logging method here so I can see what happens. Uh, restaurants. Um, and it's probably not gonna like this because this is not a string, right? Um, and let's see, can I do two string? Will that work? Uh, let's try that, yeah. Um, and, and so now let's run the app again. And now I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for the result of the main activity requesting this information from the server, receiving that information, right? So when it receives it, I should expect to see it logged. Um, and I'll, this time I'll look for that main activity tag. Uh, and you can see that there's this list of restaurants and these aren't printed very nicely, but if you wanted to, you could add a two string method to the restaurant class in order to print them properly. Now you'll notice that these have been converted to instances of my restaurant class that is over here in my models directory. And this is being done by a serialization library called Jackson that we will discuss in more detail. Jackson is taking that string that the server returned and it's actually converting it into a, into a list of restaurant objects. And how we do that, or how we tell Jackson how to do that, um, determines what information actually gets stored in each instance of, of restaurant, okay? All right, cool. So the last question here is, why isn't the list of restaurants sorted? Or, or why is it in the order that it's in? Okay, and so if I go back to my CSV file, so this is where the server got the data. So the server loaded the data from the CSV file. The client requested the data by making an HTTP request. That's a protocol that allows it to fetch data across the network. So it requested that information from the server. The server responded with a string of JSON that contained information about all these restaurants. And then the client deserialized that information and converted it into a list of restaurants and then use that to populate the display. Simple, right? We're gonna spend the next month talking about how all this happens. But why are they in this order? They're in this order because this is the order that they're in, in the CSV file. So look, El Toro is first, then Taco Shack, then Sushi Cyan, then Biagi's. Is that how you pronounce it? Not sure. Um, so this is the order that they're in, in the CSV. And so that's the order that they're in right now. Now, it's not how it's supposed to look. We want them sorted in some reasonable way because if you were browsing this, you'd be pretty confused. Like, how do I find a particular restaurant? I've heard that there's this great restaurant called, you know, I like Terra Thai, so I'm gonna keep uh, plugging for them. Um, are, are they in the list? Like, how do I find out more information about that place? An alphabetical sort would make a lot more sense here. Be, let me make a lot more sense if they were sorted in the order in which they, uh, sorry, if they were sorted by name. I don't want them in the random order that they appeared in the CSV file. I wanna sort them in some reasonable way. So the cool thing is our list adapter library that we're using allows us to tell it how to sort things. And let me show you where that happens. This is not code that you need to understand or modify, but the, 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 the list adapter library takes what's called a comparator. A comparator is something that compares two things together and it uses that comparator to sort the list. And so the comparator that it's using right now 
is this comparator called sort by name. This is back in my restaurant.java class. It's a static method. It returns what's called a comparator. Now, comparator, we'll talk in the next video a little bit about comparator versus comparable. Um, but the idea is that this is another way of indicating how something should be sorted. And right now, what it's doing is nothing. Um, in the sense that it basically, if you give it two restaurants, it returns zero, which means they're the same. And so this ends up not affecting the uh, position of anything in the list and leads to the restaurants being in the same order as they were in the CSV. So your job today is to fix this. We want the restaurants sorted by name. We'll talk a little bit about how to do that in the next video. Okay, to sum up, I wanna do this again from the bottom to the top, right? We're gonna talk about how things get to where they're going. I have a restaurant.csv file. This is the data that we've given you so far. We will give you more data later, but for now, this is what you have. This is in CSV format. When the server starts up, it parses that CSV using this method called load restaurants and converts it into a JSON string. The JSON string is returned to the client by this method right here called get restaurants that responds to a request for slash restaurants. What code makes that request? The code right here in clients as part of the method get restaurants. So get restaurants in your client code is already set up properly to retrieve that list of restaurants from the server. What calls this code? We're going up, 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 main activity.java. So in the on create method of your main activity, when the activity is created, one of the things it does is it uses the client to retrieve a list of restaurants from the server, and then it uses that list of restaurants to populate the display. We'll be making some small changes to some of this code as we go along for this checkpoint, and then for future checkpoints, we'll expect you to mimic some of the code that's here. So you might need to write a new piece of code on the server that uses different data to do something, right? Uh, but don't worry, we're gonna walk you through every step of this process. This is an overview. So, you know, again, I wanna emphasize, don't think that you're supposed to understand everything that just happened just from my 10 minute overview. That's not how this works. I'm giving you a big picture sense of where the data comes from in your app and how it gets to the display. We will dive in and dig into every step in this process to help you understand what's going on in future checkpoints.